Hi, I'm Tommy, and I'm a professional paleontologist. I'm also a philosopher and disability rights activist. Unlike most evolutionary biologists, though, I've had a lifelong obsession with the paranormal and the occult. Most of my videos concern the philosophy of magic and polytheism, or the politics of disability. Sometimes I talk about my actual research, but as that's my day job, I'm much more likely to just stick around and watch DuckTales. If you want to join me on my journey, friend, don't forget to like and subscribe, and welcome to Creepy Puppets Presents. Hey folks, did you like the, uh, the new intro? I did the music myself. Um, I found this old keyboard in my closet and I've, re you know, refurbished it into a bitty controller. And, uh, when I was at, you know, 14, 15, I got, I was really into, uh, into sort of trying to learn how to play the piano and how to, uh, compose music. I didn't have any formal education. I would just play what sounded neat to me. Uh, as then I was trying to try to like score stuff, but I'm still, uh, in experience, but I'm, I'm interested in getting back into it, especially, you know, I've, since I've mentioned that I picked up the tin whistle. Anyway, so uh, music rant over. I recently acquired a Dragon Touch 4K digital action camera. It's a discount GoPro. Um, by the time tax and shipping were as applied to it, uh, it came to 60 bucks. And then I had to buy, you know, a $10 SD card for the memory but what's great about this camera is you know i was i was having issues with my phone camera that the the apple geniuses couldn't fix uh so i needed a portable camera i picked this one up it's also i got a dive camera that works really well i've taken it underwater i can't compare it to the gopro because i've never owned a gopro what i will say is i i also really like the fact that you can use it as a webcam just with a micro usb Cable, you don't have to add a capture card, which is wonderful. Just another thing I don't have to buy, right? I will say though that it's cheeky because there's no image stabilization and the audio quality is very poor. So now that I had a portable camera, I thought I'd test it out by taking it with me as I went through a typical day of doing research here at Lehigh University during the summer session when there are no classes in session and it really is, is summer research. I had a tutoring appointment at 10, I had a meeting at 12, did some work in my office later on, and now I'm back here. Uh, now, I've had to make a couple edits uh, in part for legal purposes and in part because the audio became completely unusable and I had to dub over those parts. But this is approximately a day <laughs> in my life of summer research. All right, so uh, it's about six o'clock in the morning. I've just had my shower and um, this is my usual workstation. My two computers, um, my two computer monitors, um, my MIDI keyboard, and you can see I have a comfy office chair and uh, um, my keyboard and mouse and my drawing pad, which I used to make those neat drawings you see 
for the channel art and also to do math with my tutoring clients um, and the other electronics. So I have my, my assorted bookshelf and I have my uh, tablet that I found. It's a cheap Amazon Fire tablet that's useful for uh, reading uh, e-books, uh, e-textbooks. And then the other piece of tech that I have, I've also got my phone uh, and my Chromebook, which is what I take with me when I leave the apartment. This is sort of always on me. All right, one more look at my setup, and you can see that I am uh, now ready to begin my morning work. It's about 6.30 in the morning. Um, so, you know, usually I'll watch uh, some email and then some video editing and uh, I have my drawing pad. I, I, in fact, I have a math tutor this morning at 10 o'clock. And then after that, around 11 o'clock, I'm going into the office. All right, so this is where the good quality audio gave out. I walk from my apartment to Hellertown to the Goodman campus to pick up the campus connector bus. I usually walk to the Saucon Valley, sorry, Saucon Village bus stop, as that's the closest. And I get on to the Lehigh University campus connector buses, which are pretty comfortable, mercifully air conditioned. It gets pretty humid here in the Lehigh Valley. And uh, yeah, so I've just, I like to sit sort of in the back if I can or someplace convenient. All right, so this is the, the famous walk. You can see how much it looks like Hogwarts. Uh, that's the, the famous Lehigh Student Center. That church there is Packer Campus. That little building is the philosophy department. And as we walk down here, you're going to see Steps, which is the office building where I work, where the geology department is headquartered. Uh, and that's Steps there in the corner, the red brick and glass building. Uh, cutting me crossing the street. Here's me entrance. Uh, here's me entering. This is the um, annex to Steps, sort of parallels that street we were just on, Packer Avenue. And you can see it's rather nice, but I'm going to cut and walk here to the main entrance. Look at that atrium. Every time I walk in, I'm impressed by that atrium. It was up five stories. And we're going to see the top of that in just a few seconds. So this is the, the main entrance to Steps. There's the list of stuff. This feels somewhat like a modern hospital, I think. So I'm going to take the elevator up, wait for the doors. Uh, there's the elevator panel. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's going to let us out on floor five, which is where my office is. And look, we're going to walk to the top of the atrium now on the fifth floor and look down. And this is the atrium from the top now. And every time I look down, I have to brace the walls because I feel like I'm going to fall. So I'm going to cut walking down the hallway because it gives you kind of a vertigo feeling. But here's my office with my name tag and my title to make it all look very efficient. And then I'm going to show you this window at the end of the hall. I always have to do this. It's the entirety of South Bethlehem. You can see from here. It's just so high up and gives you such a sense of vertigo, too. Pan across the whole city. And then way over there in the corner, that's Bethlehem Steel. All right. I sure hope you can hear me. Um, let me see if I can make this straighter. Uh, so this is my office. Normally, this is the kind of office I'd share with other people, but right now, uh, 
I'm the only person assigned to this office who is in the country. Uh, so this office is basically all mine until uh, probably new people will be assigned to this office uh, come the fall. So uh, I just had a meeting with my uh, principal investigator, the person who is advising me on my dissertation, and he gave me uh, some papers to read and I am going to do that and with those papers in hand uh, uh, I am going to sit here and read for a while and then I am going to go uh, back to my apartment. So I suppose I should try to explain uh, what my research is actually while I'm here unfortunately I forgot my paper uh, at home so I will just give you the Cliff Notes version evolutionary biology is not what you see in like creation versus evolution debates. Evolutionary biology, like all forms of population biology, is incredibly mathematics based. We are interested in quantitatively describing, describing with equations, changes uh, in the evolutionary and ecological process. One really interesting thing that us paleontologists can do is we can try to refine these equations of evolution and ecology and we can back them up and, and rapidly validate them with data from fossil species given that if we have enough of them. Now, if you have a species that's only known from like a fossil tooth Obviously, it's not going to work, but we are talking about being able to develop hundreds of fossils, something that fossilizes consistently uh, and in, in varying conditions that we are able to test our hypothesis. The, the specific hypothesis we're testing in the first part of my dissertation project is that one model organism that fossils fossilizes really well uh, called the testate amoeba, uh, has its particular distribution. Uh, it does certain it does a particular particularly well. Has different fitness in different environments. And our hypothesis is that this is quantitatively linked to values of functional traits. So we're trying to validate using a set of more than 3,000 fossils. Um, an equation that links functional traits in testate amoeba to environmental conditions in testate amoeba. Now if that works, um, we are maybe interested in some more general ecology and evolutionary biology equations that we can validate with this stuff and we can also validate with other fossil data we have um, including plant fossils and insect fossils, which is something I'm interested in. So, I'm going to get to reading, and I'm going to shut you off because you're probably low on power. And uh, when we cut back, we'll probably be back in my apartment. So that wasn't too bad. I'm back here in the apartment. Uh, I actually ended up spending a little bit longer on campus, just sort of walking around. Um, the campus store is finally completely open. Uh, I got back here, I had lunch, and uh, I've subsequently had dinner. And, you know, I'm going to do a little bit more work before checking my brain out and watching Amphibia. Um, you can definitely see that it's shaky, and also it's been really humid lately, and that seems to cause some condensation to have built up on the inside of the lid. But otherwise, it's a neat little camera. Uh, and that's been sort of a day in my life. And 
Uh, I may do another one of these when the fall semester is in full swing and I have office hours and I have uh, classes to do. But for right now, you know, mostly I'm working from here. So thanks for listening to my mostly uncensored ramblings uh, and take care, folks.